Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this short tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can add interest to your presentation by animating your icons directly in PowerPoint. So let's jump into it. As always, we'll start with a completely blank presentation. Right click and choose Layout Blank. To save time, I'm going to quickly paste in the icons that I had along with the text. And if you want to know how to get your own icons, you can either go to Insert and choose Icons and type whatever you're looking for in there and pick the ones you like best. Or you can go to another resource such as Flat Icon and pick them from there. Or as I've done in this example, I've actually drawn them manually with shapes in PowerPoint. And I have a lot of other videos that you can check out where I've gone through how to create your own graphics and shapes. But for now, let's animate these. For this tone one, it's quite simple. We go to animations and we choose fade. And then we go to add animation and I'm going to choose teeter from the emphasis. And I also want to make this just half a second duration and happen with previous. So if we play that, it will fade and teeter at the same time. And I'm just going to fade up the text at the same time by choosing with previous. That's great. The pitch one is even easier. Here, I've just chosen a wipe, but because it would make more sense going from left to right, we can go to effect options and choose from left. And I just want to make sure this happens after the previous thing. So it will display tone and then pitch. And we just need to fade the text with previous. So it will be tone, pitch, Nice. For volume, I've used a fade and a spin. So we'll choose fade first and then spin. We'll go to add animation. We'll choose spin from emphasis. We'll choose this to happen with previous and then double click on it for the settings. And I just want to make this have a smooth end. So I'll drag that all the way to the right and then press OK. And I only want this to take one second. So I'm just going to click the duration down to one second and then we'll click on the text and fade that with previous as well. And I just want to make sure that the start of the volume animation starts after the pitch one. So I'll select after previous. Pretty simple so far. Now let's do the speed one, which is a little more complicated. So here we'll add a fade as before. And we also need to add a fade to the semicircle that's above it and we'll make that fade happen with previous and the first one we'll put after previous so that means after the volume's finished this one will fade up for speed and now we can add the rotation using spin so I'll click on this and then I'll go to add animation and choose spin it's important that we click add animation because if you click any of these, it will replace the animation. So it would replace the fade, but we want to add animation. And now I've added the spin, but at the moment it spins the whole way around. And the trick with this one is to actually put it inside a circle and rotate it as a group. And I'll change the color of this just so you can see where it is. So here is the circle I'm rotating. And I have another video explaining exactly how that's done. And I'll link to that in the description below. But basically the reason is the spin will only work from the very center. So if you just had this pointer here, it would spin from the center. Whereas I've put it in a circle and grouped it. So it'll spin nicely from the middle part where I want it to here. So now I just want to make two changes. I'm going to go into my animation pane. I'm going to choose with previous. And then if we double click on this, go to amount and type in 140 degrees because I don't want it to go all the way around and then we press enter otherwise it won't save it and I'm going to give it a bounce end of 0.5 and I'm going to select auto reverse so it will rotate 140 degrees bounce slightly and then come back so I'll press ok on that and I'm just going to turn the duration down to three quarters of a second for that one then click on where it says speed, put a fade on that and say with previous. So now we've done the first four. 
and I've just seen that it's taken the bounce timing down. So I'll just double click on this group 67 and I'll type 0.5 in here. That was just because we took down the entire duration. It took some off the end, but I want it to be 0 0.5. Now let's do the pause, which is pretty simple. And then I'll show you some motion paths to do the emphasis. So for the pause, again, we add a fade. And then we go to add animation. And we choose grow shrink. We set the first one to after previous. And we set the next one to with previous. I'm going to take this down to half a second and then double click on it and type in 90%, press enter and choose auto reverse. So what that's going to do is it's going to size it down by 10% and then back up by 10%, effectively giving the impression that a button's being pressed in this case. We'll just add the fade on this and choose with previous. And now for the final one, emphasis, I'm going to show you how you can do some motion paths. So the first thing we'll do is fade in these three lines. And you can hold shift as we click on all of these to multiple select. And then click on fade and that will fade them all up. On the very first one, we'll choose after previous as we want that to happen after the pauses one is done. And now for the small circles. We'll do this left one first. I'll click on this and I'll choose fade. I'll set this to happen after previous and then we'll add the motion path. We'll go to add animation and then you can see motion paths and we'll choose lines. So this green dot is the beginning of the motion path and the red dot is the end. I'm going to hold down shift and drag this up and position it about there because I want the left one to go up, the center one to go down slightly and the right one to go up. And I'm going to make sure this happens with previous and set it to a second and a half. And then if we double click on this, we can choose it to have a smooth end. Great. For these next two, we can click on this once. Go to where it says animation painter in the advanced animation section under the animation section of the ribbon, click on that. And then I've got the paintbrush as my cursor. And when I click on this circle here, it will add the same effect. And all we need to do is click on this and then drag the dot, the red dot down to where we want it to go to, which I think is about there. And then we can click on the first one again and choose animation painter and apply it to this one. So it's a really quick way of copying the animations that we've added. And if you want to adjust where this goes to, you can just click on the triangle, hold down shift and bring it down slightly for variation. And now all I want to do is make sure that these all happen at the same time. So I'm going to click on the very first animation of the second dot, hold down shift, click on the bottom, and choose with previous. And finally, we'll click on the emphasis text, click fade and choose with previous. All done. That's great. And let's see it. Brilliant. A quick way of using the inbuilt animations in PowerPoint to give your icons more impact and engage your audience. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.